Good day and great health. My name is Dr. Jared Sarko of Ohio Specific Chiropractic. I'm a pediatric family wellness and upper cervical specific chiropractor. Today on this video, we're going to talk about the connection between the scoliosis or abnormal curves of the spine and the upper cervical spine. Now, my disclaimer at the start of all these videos is to let everyone know that chiropractic, our goal is not to treat any specific uh, sickness or disease of the body, but our main objective is to help improve the overall structural and functional integrity of the upper cervical spine and brainstem area of our nerve system. Now, in order to kind of talk about the uh, connection between the upper cervical spine and scoliosis, let's do a simple crash course in anatomy and physiology. In the upper cervical spine, we focus on four main structures. We have the occipital bone found on the base of our head or our skull. Next down we have the atlas bone or the first cervical vertebra. Next down we have the axis bone or the second cervical vertebra. Now housed and protected in these three bones we will find the brainstem area of our nerve system. You see our brainstem is one of the most important areas of our nerve system in general. You see our nerve system does four main things for our body. It controls all the movements we make, senses everything we feel, regulates all our body organs, and relates us to the outside world. Now one specific function of the brainstem is to adapt to all the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors that are constantly bombarding our system on a day-to-day -day basis. When our body adapts to these stresses at the brainstem level, it helps keep our body into homeostatic balance, which is a quintessential a factor of health and well-being. Now if our body uh, can't adapt to a physical, chemical, or emotional stress as best it can, it's going to create a compensation. Now a compensation that occurs at the brainstem level is what we call a vertebral subluxation. A vertebral subluxation is a physical presentation of a abnormal compensation. Now my schematic drawing here, I just drew a simple uh, version of a vertebral subluxation. So in general, when we have a subluxation, the atlas and or the axis bone are going to shift laterally, left and right, and they're also going to rotate left and right uh, in a certain direction. So in this case, I had the atlas and axis bone shifting, over, shifting and laterally rotating over to the right. Now along with that shifting of the atlas and axis bone, the occipital bone will often also shift in the same direction, and as it shifts, it's also going to tilt one way or the other. More often than not, the head in the occipital bone is going to tilt up to the same side as the vertebral subluxation. Now when that happens, when we have the head tilting up one way or the other, it's going to cause our visual field or our eyes to become uneven. Now our brain doesn't want to see the world uh, uneven or unbalanced. So in order to level the head the best it can, we have a reflex in our body called a writing reflex. The writing reflex is going to involve, uh, primarily it's going to involve three specific sense groups. It's going to involve the vestibular sense found in our inner ear, our ocular sense or our, or our eyesight, and the proprioceptor sense, which is found throughout the whole body, but has the highest concentration found in the upper cervical spine. Now these three senses are going to talk with the brain in order to tell the brain and the brainstem the best way to help level the eyes. Now the best way it does that is going to engage the spinal muscles, or the paraspinal muscles, found around our spinal column. So as, this, as the head becomes level, our spine must compensate for uh, the deviation in the biomechanics of the vertebral subluxation. So as our, spine, uh, as, as our spine's function and structure compensates, the muscles around the spine are going to contract and stretch unevenly. This is then going to create uh, the, the, the balance and the support of our spinal column to become uneven. And we'll often see uh, a, a similar pattern or presentation of these abnormal curves in our spine. These, curves, these abnormal curves are often going to be found in areas of transition in our spine. You see, in our spine we have three general areas. 
The top area is called the cervical spine. The middle area is called the thoracic spine. And the lower portion is called the lumbar spine. Now when we look at our spine front to back or back to front, we shouldn't see any real deviation in that curve. If anything, it should be uh, fairly straight or as straight as possible. It's when we turn our, our body and we look at our spine from the side, that's when we start to see these normal curves. So if we're looking at our spine from the side, in our cervical region, we'll see a front-facing curve or a lordotic curve. In our thoracic spine, we'll see a normal kyphotic, uh, kyphotic curve. And in the, in the lumbar region, we'll see again a normal lordotic curve. Again, it's those areas of transition between the cervical and the thoracic and the thoracic and lumbar that will be have areas of weakness due to that normal uh, presentation of those transitional curved areas. So, so when we have a vertebral subluxation, what's going to happen is we're going to increase our uh, presentation of body compensations by creating more and more disruptions in the structure and function of our spinal column. Now, what's the goal of chiropractic? Again, the, the goal of chiropractic is not to, in a sense, try to straighten spines. Our main objective is to help improve uh, the integrity of our spinal column by easing tension off the nerves and improving overall body balance. When we do that, we increase the spinal function, uh, function and spi uh, structure of our spine so then our, so our body then can better adapt to the stresses that come that uh, are going to bombard our system. Now this is just a, a simple primer into the connection between the upper cervical spine and scoliosis. So if you have any other questions or concerns, please reach out to me on my website at ohiospecific.com. Thank you very much.